Hello chess friends and welcome to us out of chess channel and welcome back to our Queen's Gambit Decline series. So in this series we're following this very nice opening from whites and from blacks perspective and today we're continuing again with our Queen's Gambit Decline series and the so-called Chigorin defense. The Chigorin defense we have explained so far with some uh, different possibilities for white and from black with some different sidelines for white and for black. Today we're continuing with a very sharp line that black can play. It's an early e5 line. We have seen different possibilities uh, in which black can play so delaying moves but uh, today's line will be this very very sharp aggressive method to play this early e5 move we'll play, uh, i'll explain of course what's all about but i think this e5 this early e5 it's not such a good line for black so that's why in this video we're trying to beat this early e5 ideas with some great counter plays and in this video actually i'm going to show you how to beat the trigger in defense uh, in several videos i've already explained to you some different ideas how to beat the trigger in defense and in this video we'll also try to beat this very sharp opening so uh, let's check out now the, what's first of all of course the queen's gambit declined what is of course the chigorin defense and then what's this early e5 idea for black so if you want to have also a better understanding of this particular video please check out my previous analyze videos in which i've explained also different ideas but also different sidelines of this opening so so far we have d4 d5 after move c4 now comes this chigorin move which is of course the move knight to c6 uh, we have analyzed this particular line knight to c3 and and in my previous videos we have explained d takes c4 continuation today we're analyzing this move early e5 because uh, e5 is breaking through in the center it clarifies of course the center immediately but the problem i think is that white is slightly faster in the attack because here my recommendation is to play simply c takes d5 black can also play uh, d, uh, e takes d4 but that's actually not such a good idea here for black uh, for black because we can simply proceed with d takes c6 if black plays now of course d takes c3 we can simply take out the queen go into the simplify line because our king takes d8 we can play b takes c3 and now after b takes uh, c6 we have now reached this position the material is equal but uh, white is much 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 better because of one particular problem here we have already a four versus three situation on the king side which means uh, that white is much much better on the king side the, in a potential end game white can create a passport maybe here on the e file or maybe on the f file at least white can always create a pass pawn in a potential end game but uh, black cannot create a pass pawn although black has sort of a pawn majority on the queen side with three versus two pawns here on the queen side but that's actually not the pawn majority because these are double pawns on if white plays this game correctly if white um, plays i don't know the potential end game correctly then black can really never but never create a pass pawn on the c file so that's why uh, this double pawn structure is the main issue on the c file and i found a great game here played by um, uh, last locars against guy monaville in this particular line uh white won the game very very easily i don't want to really explain you the whole game what happened if that happens because uh, from this point on it's not so important this is not uh, opening theory anymore uh, this is simply a great game uh the game will be in the description below so you can maybe analyze the whole game the most important thing is that we have reached now this picture this position here in which white is much much better here let's see a couple moves how white simply build up the attack here knight to f3 is normal development e4 uh, bishop to d, uh, d6 bishop to c4 knight to d4 and now with the move f3 bishop to e3 uh white can build here a normal attack casting rook to b1 so white has a dominant position so the problem is as i said this double pawn structure on the c file so let's see now different opportunities in this early e5 continuation so here i found a really a great game played by two international masters steve Geinert against the fabrice one ts these are really not maybe popular plays but sometimes we really reach this similar positions even in freedom master level international master level so i think still there are plenty of games that are worth to study even maybe if they're not games played by gary kasparov magnus garton maybe by top grand masters you see all also freedom masters international masters uh, candidate masters uh, can play really really uh, decent and sharp games so let's check out now again a different possibility here for black and how white should basically counterplay this idea so here d4 d5 again c4 uh knight to c6 the game will be also in the description below so you can of course analyze also some different possibilities for yourself again we have the chigorin defense with the womb knight to c6 so please as i said check 
check out also my previous analysis because uh, maybe you're asking yourself the question what happens if that happens in my previous videos we have uh, analyzed different possibilities so as i said we have created many videos of the chigorin defense maybe there's something also for you uh, to watch so here after move knight to c6 knight to c3 again this early e5 my recommendation c takes d5 but now you can face maybe this continuation knight to d4 and now you have to play a little bit a tricky continuation first you should play e3 kicking away the knight after move knight to f5 now again play e4 allow your opponent maybe to play knight to d4 or knight to d6 because now uh, you see we gain sort of an extra tempo it seems so that black is building a very powerful blockade with the move knight to d6 but now it's time really to find the best continuation i think uh, here this line is not so good for for uh, black either because we have seen in this previous line um, when um, uh, more material was traded this um, uh, four versus three situation that uh, we gained on the king side was a huge strategic element for white white had a comfortable game but even in this line after move 9 to d6 it seems so that black has built here a powerful blockade let's flip the board a little bit it seems so that uh, everything is pretty much compact everything is pretty much glued together but it's actually not so the engine believe me or not gives here already a plus two evaluation for white which is really wild which is really incredible but you have to find now really the best continuation the best continuation is simply to play f4 uh, breaking through because this is a weak pawn and the only way to create the further the blockade around the square e5 is to play f6 but it's already weakening the pawn structure a little bit and it see it paralyzes a little bit the, the bishop's activity the dark square uh, bishop activity because the dark square bishop on f8 is now really a bad base piece so we should simply continue the pressure with the move uh, knight to f3 if this happens uh, e takes f4 uh, then of course bishop to f4 and you see now this is a huge huge problem e5 will happen uh, maybe bishop to d3 queen to d2 and even queenside castling is here an opportunity the problem is again that the pieces of blacks don't have good squares maybe this likes for bishop could get some kind of attack but uh, you don't want to really play bishop to g4 because you are maybe attacking the knight to f3 but this bishop is the only piece that's good on the board the other all of these other minor pieces are not so good you cannot even play knight to h6 in order to develop the, the this knight somewhere because i think in the continuation uh, white will simply destroy the pawn structure by playing bishop takes h6 so all these pieces are really cramped so that's why even e takes f4 is here another possibility so after move knight to f3 here in this particular game that i've prepared here knight to f7 uh black plate here bishop to b5 uh here bishop to d7 you see how black is forced to give up the best piece on the board the best minor piece um, uh, on the board to trade it off here in the continuation we have now queen to b3 and now b6 was played by black and here the engine gives here already again a 2.5 evaluation here for white which is really incredible in such an early stage of the game with the same material on the board uh, black is almost like lost so here after move b6 we have now f takes e5 by uh, steven gainard uh, we have fabrice uh, van ties played uh, f takes e5 and now d6 which was maybe the best suggested move but it, i like this move because it complicated things in the continuation of the game we have bishop to b5 but that was actually this idea here by white queen to e6 uh, forcing uh, this bishop to come on e7 and now simply takes d takes e7 we have queen to d7 and now a brilliant move again by white queen takes f7 king to f7 knight to e5 and here simply takes knight takes d7 bishop to d7 and although uh, it seems so that uh, black has maybe the defended this position there these are opposite color bishops on the on, on the board but still at least we can protect this pawn by playing knight to d5 that was also white's continuation here we have rook to c8 and now bishop to g5 so white is simply relying on this very annoying pawn uh, on the square e7 so black is again in serious serious positional problems we have now bishop to b5 rook to d1 uh, we have h6 now a brilliant move again by uh, by white knight to b6 after uh here in c takes b6 we have now this one rook to d8 uh, king to f7 here a new promotion uh, rook to, uh, bishop takes e8 well, now casting 
brilliant brilliant tactics here by uh by white knight to uh uh knight to f6 was played rook takes um, uh, c8 after move h takes g5 we have now also this one e5 really really brilliant game here by white uh now the knight will be taken and of course uh, white is continuing the game with the uh with up the exchange so here in the continuation rook to h4 we have e takes f6 uh, g takes f6 uh the pawn count is the same but as i said uh, white is continuing the game with the rook versus the bishop so here rook to c7 here we can also take out this one uh, we have rook to d4 brilliant brilliant game really by white h takes g4 rook to g4 uh, rook to e7 so bishop to c6 rook to uh, f2 bishop to d5 now let's see a couple more moves uh, it's obviously a winning game here by uh, for white but uh, black decided to continue the game sometimes i think in chess it's also a decent choice to some sometimes even to just resign the game when your opponent has played a brilliant tactic i think it would be fair to say that it's simply simply something to resign because uh, the game that white played here was really dominant so if, if i would would play the game uh, with the black pieces here i would resign for sure because uh, i would honor my opponent by playing such a brilliant game so as i said it's in my opinion something worth the so rook to e4 here rook to b6 attacking this weakness uh rook to e5 uh, rook to um uh, rook to d2 we have bishop to c8 again this bishop comes uh rook to f3 here a couple more perpetuals and the rook to f6 uh, another pawn is taken we have now this check another problem uh we have bishop to d5 and after rook to f2 in this position finally black resigned so brilliant brilliant game uh, let's see now uh, as i said the most important pictures here the most important strategic element so as i said if your opponent is playing maybe here this early uh move we can play c takes d5 your opponent can maybe take but it's not a good continuation it leads to into a simplified line where white has i think a pleasant position by uh, creating this four versus three uh, situation on the king side by creating this pawn majority and in this particular scenario as i said if your opponent is playing uh, maybe with the move knight to d4 e3 kicking away the knight knight to f5 e4 a new tempo against the knight after knight to d6 it seems so that black is solving all of the positional problems by creating this very very powerful block it but now it's time to strike in the center with move f4 and you have seen how much uh, problems uh, black has in the continuation of the game especially uh, by developing the knight the light core bishop is not good bishop is stuck a little bit you would love of course to develop maybe your bishop somewhere here so as i said uh, this is not simply a good good continuation here for black so i hope you realize these ideas you should study also some different ideas for yourself we cannot really cover every particular line in in uh, these videos it's simply impossible because uh, um, uh, chess is of course um, a, a game of billions and billions of possibilities but at least i think we can solve some of the strategical problems and i think uh, now we have solved the problems of this particular line of this early e5 as i said you should study also some different opportunities but this should uh, this could be uh, maybe something that you could use as your cornerstone of this particular line so okay i hope that you enjoyed this video if you want to study more this chigor in defense and more uh, of other possibilities of the queen's gambit decline here's the link of our whole series and if you have problems maybe maybe to play as black check out my nimzo indian defense series and my hyper accelerated dragon sicilian defense series as good responses against e4 and and d4 and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course